Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a samurai mask. I'm doing this as part of uh, just a little series. I made this on my Creality uh, 10 version 3. It's been a great printer so far. I've made quite a few things on it. Um, made some different helmets. I, I'm working on Iron Man helmet, Mandalorian helmet, and some other some other cool projects. Um, I got this file from Thingiverse, and the creator was Todor Kolev. I'll put a link in the description below. As you can see here, I start off by printing the um, file on my printer here. Once it was finished printing, I started cleaning up the print. I like to use tree supports on my prints. I found it, it works the best for my machine and, and when I'm doing my prints. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get the feeling for it, you'll understand how to manipulate the settings to best meet your needs. Now, as you can see here, I'm taking my time. I'm trying to go easy, make sure I'm not ripping anything that's gonna cause any issues. I'm using the clippers that come with the printer itself to go ahead and clip off a lot of the bigger portions or pieces of the print that need to be cleaned off on there. Now, once I have the clipping done, what I'm going to do to get a little bit better results and smooth out the print somewhat is I'm going to use a wood burning tool. Now, anytime I'm sanding using a wood burning tool, anything like that, I wear a respirator mask. I don't want to be breathing any of that material in as I'm working. I'm taking my time here, going around the edges, finding little details, anything that's gonna take a long time to sand, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to smooth that out as much as possible. Now I move on to the 150 grit sandpaper, once again, hitting those edges and all the areas that really need attention. This print wasn't perfect, it still came out pretty good. I used PETG for my material. I usually use PLA, but I got a bunch of it for free from work. So I was able to go ahead and print this guy off. All right, once I have it relatively smooth, I'm going to move on to my first uh, phase of painting, which is going to be a paint and primer. I'm going to start off with black for this mask here. Just making sure I cover all the areas. doesn't need to be perfect for, for the print I'm doing here, but it depends on what, how detailed you want to be and what you want to do. For me, I was good enough with uh, one coat of that. Next, I moved on to using liquid latex for some designs. Went ahead and applied that on some of the areas that I wanted to keep the black. This is a nice material to use because once it dries, it actually becomes clear and then you can just go ahead and paint over it, do whatever you need to do, and then you can just peel it off nice and easy. It leaves pretty decent results once you're done with it. Now I'm gonna keep hitting those areas that I want to, once again, keep black, Takes a minute, don't blob on too much. Once again, it's not a not a huge mistake if you do. I'm not super particular when I'm doing this stuff. I'm just trying to have fun, create a few things. So it's it's up to you and how detailed you wanna be, but this was good enough to meet my needs. Got that all on there. You can see it's that nice bluish color. Now here you can see it's pretty much dry. There's a few spots where it's globbed on a little bit more but for the most part, a lot of it's already dry. Now moving on to the next portion, I wanted the teeth to be gold, so I went ahead and spray painted that. Now you gotta be careful when you're spray painting different uh, brands of paint. Sometimes it will cause the paint to crack. I've learned that on a few different of my prints, so find what paints work and what you need to accomplish for your project. I'm covering the teeth up now after letting the paint dry because I wanna keep those gold but I'm going to actually turn the uh, face mask into a different color, which is going to be red. For the most part, I was using a lot of Krylon. It seemed to adhere pretty well. Now, a tip too is it's cold where I'm at right now, and so you don't want to leave your paints in the garage, and you also don't want to leave the print uh, out in the cold either. So I paint my stuff out in my garage. I took it outside, both the paint and the print, spray painted it and then brought it back inside so it could dry in a warmer environment. Once I was done with that, I'm moving on to my black wash. So go ahead and dilute a little bit. Basically what I'm trying to do or what you're trying to do when you're doing this is put it in areas where anything would accumulate naturally. So all those creases and crevices, anywhere that something could get dirty, um, depending on whatever project you're doing, you can also make it look like it's really worn down. There's metal underneath, whatever, whatever you want to 
create it's possible to do that but i found that when you do this weathering actually gives it a little bit more of a realistic um, appearance as opposed to having it just broad colors and not having that that weathered appearance get in all those areas i like to pat it i found i have the best results with that now once i'm done with applying my weathering for the first layer i'm going to go ahead and remove my liquid latex there and as you can see underneath is where the black paint is didn't come out exactly perfect like i said before but i'm not looking for perfect i don't need a exact replica or model i wanted something that looked a little bit more worn a little bit chipped a little bit jagged i think it just gives it a little bit better of an appearance and that's that's just my opinion you might want something a little bit cleaner take your time let the paint dry you don't want to start rubbing the paint and then the paint comes off you're trying to find the areas for the liquid latex i like taking either a paint stick even your thumb um, and it comes off pretty easily once you find the area now we have the second layer of weathering that I'm doing here. Taking that paintbrush and just dabbing over those areas. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tape now where you can see our teeth have stayed fairly good with the gold paint. Now we're gonna need some sort of way to wear the mask. So here I'm gonna use some twine and I'm gonna make a three strand braid. So I cut three strips of this material into about double arm's length or around six feet. Just give myself more than enough to work with. It's pretty simple, it's just like a typical braid you would do. So I make a little overhand knot. Then I took my clamp and then I put the knot underneath the clamp, as you can see there, and I started my braid. It's very simple, left over right, and you just go rotate back and forth, alternating sides, until you have your three strand braid here. Something I like to do is I like to make sure that I always clean up the line, make sure that there's no fraying or anything like that. So be careful you don't set this on fire, especially the natural type of line instead of something like the 550 here or the paracord. I'm taking the 550 inner and what I'm going to do is what's called whipping. So basically what it means is I'm going to secure two ends of the um, natural line there and all I'm doing is I make a bite I lay it on top of there, wrap it around quite a few times, and then I go through that hole, as you can see there, pull the rest of that, the uh, tail of the line there through, the working end, and then I'm going to grab that part of the line. I'm going to pull it, that slip loop through, securing that to itself. Snip it, then what you're going to do is put some heat to it, it almost like shrink wraps the nylon or the 550 material, and then I'm going to go ahead do the other side and then finally once I'm done I'm going to cut it. Trim the edges and then I get as close to possible as that whipping as, as I can. Um, I also put some paint on there just to make it um, not stand out as much having that, that white didn't look as good so I just put a little bit of black on there a little bit more weathering. You can secure it however you want. I decided to do just try to make it somewhat fancy but like pretty simple at the same time. Then I threw some matte clear coat on there you know, just to protect the paint job that I had put on there uh, with the weathering and the spray paint and whatnot. Just gives it a little bit more protection so it doesn't get any scrapes. As you guys can see here, this is the final product. Like I said previously, this is pretty simple to do. Uh, this is my, my first kind of go getting into 3D printing. I've only been doing it for a few months, but as I said it earlier, I've been able to make some pretty cool stuff. This was for a work Christmas party we're doing a masquerade party and I want to do something a little bit different but uh, yeah you can do some pretty cool stuff and make some interesting things I hope you guys really enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and if you have any questions or comments please leave it down below thank you for watching